Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my knitting podcast. Um, so actually, the first vlog that I did was a sewing and knitting um, podcast, but I've now decided to split my sewing and my knitting into two different podcasts. So there'll be, this is just going to be a knitting podcast today and then I'll do like my sewing updates in different podcasts. I think that might be a bit easier going forward and hopefully make them less long and easier to watch. So if you're just interested in the sewing, you can just watch the sewing. And if you're just interested in the knitting, you can just um, watch the knitting ones. So yeah, so this is my next second knitting podcast. So thanks for coming back. If you come back for more or welcome, if this is the first time you've watched. So yeah, so I'm Rebecca and I only really started properly knitting probably back last January. So just over a year, but I've only really started getting properly doing more knitting um, in the past sort of four, five months. So yeah, so today um, I'll just talk about one of my finished objects, so there's two, is um, this slipover vest that I'm wearing today, which I am wearing with um, a me made dress, which if anyone does so is the Dear and Dear My Assertus dress. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, so this is the Petite Knit Holiday Slipover and it's the second actual garment that I've ever knitted for myself. Um, and I've made the full size, which is a side large, based on um, my bust measurement, which is around about 100 centimetres. Um, and this pattern is drafted for from bust 92 to 156 and it's designed to be worn with a six centimeters of ease so yes yeah, so i chose the fourth size um and it's two iron weight strands held together with a lace weight strand of yarn and i actually like i say because i hadn't been knitting that long when i did this back in december january um went with one of the recommendations of yarn that she she put in her pattern and that is a sandness garn cos um and this one is the i think it's the tote pull away yep as you can see there that a blush kind of pink color so the two strands of this held together with one strand and I use a Sanders Garn Tin Silk Mohair and that is in the colourway Truffle and I thought on the website, I bought them from Knit in London that they would look really, work well together and this is, yeah, this is the outcome here yeah. so it's got deep armholes and a split hem at the side so I'm pretty pleased with it and I was like really inspired by everyone, even the knitting, the knitting community and just in general, like vests, you can call it a vest, slip over, um, like lots of people were wearing them. My friend had got many different ones that I um, really loved so I was inspired to, to try this. To be fair, I haven't actually worn it a lot and that's because I made it and then I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure if... Um, yeah, I'm cool enough or vests. Weird. Thank God, me sit down. Um, yeah, if vests would suit me, so I put this on. Um, and the only way to get used to wearing it is actually wear it in real life. So I'm gonna just try and yeah work it into my wardrobe more. And luckily today it's snowing and eight degrees in April, so um, it's been keeping me warm on the school run. So yeah, so it, um, I haven't, like I say, this is only the second garment I've made and the first one was a cardigan, which you knit every piece in the flat and then seamed them together. So this, you start off working at the back then through the shoulders into the front yoke and then join it for the body, like under the arms. And then you've got your split rib and it uses an Italian cast off, which again was the first time that I've done that. Um, I really enjoyed it actually and obviously because it works out as like a chunky knit 
with all the yarns held together it did knit up relatively quickly um i'm not i'm not too um like picking up the, the stitches for the armbands wasn't too bad actually and i think really i've done quite a good job there but the neck band going round I did rip, rip it back and keep trying doing it. This is like the best I could get. And then after a while, I was like, oh, I'm just going to go with it. It's like the first time I've ever picked up the stitches to knit. So I'm pretty pleased with it, really. Um, yeah, so I am trying it on. This like this is a dress today. I have worn it over a shirt before and some jeans. So, yeah, my family um, <laughs> made me feel great this morning. My husband asked me if I was going to an historical event of some kind with the outfit I was wearing and then my youngest girl said I looked like a chocolate bar so um yeah that was a bit of a, <laughs> a laugh this morning but I'm ignoring their comments and yeah my friend said it was really nice and she popped around for a coffee so um yeah I'm really pleased with it I think um a vest maybe that's a bit more close fitting or in a less chunky yarn I might feel easier to slip into my wardrobe with my other like knee maids but yeah definitely keeping me warm today on this cold and snowy day and then the only other um finished finished object that I've got is a pair of socks um which I think I casted on probably back in September I think um here they are this is a DK like vanilla sock like two by two rib and then yeah just stockinette stitch and a heel flap and gusset which is the only kind of um heel that I've ever done on a sock I've knitted a couple of socks and I've always done this type of heel and actually I, I quite enjoy enjoy it like breaks up the stockinette stitch and this is the other one well, I say I finished it I haven't yet I've yet to um weave in the ends and then I don't know if anyone else gets this it's got like a little hole on one side so I need to um sew that together get rid of that hole but yeah I am looking forward to to wearing these keeping my feet nice and warm in the house or now it's still snowing in April <laughs> in my boots so the yarn I use, I've got a little bit of it left, there it is, and it's got, it's like pale pink and it's got lots of speckles, like um, an ochre colour, blue, pink, and then that's the, the mini skein colour that came with it. And it is from the Fibre Fox. <laughs> And it is Merino DK. So it is superwash merino, 75% with 25% nylon. And the colour is Wildflower Meadow. And that came together as a set. So yeah, I really like socks. And being DK, they knitted up like really quickly compared to fingering weight socks. So yeah, it's a good um, knitting project to have. I usually, if I picking the kids up from school and taking the car to take it with me or when, when they're at their swimming lessons and stuff just to knit in the car so I don't have to think about it too much. Yeah so they're the only finished knitting projects that I've got to show you today. Oh, and I made the, actually I made the medium size, I think she's got, I can just check actually I think I've got the pattern here still, I don't know if she's got four sizes so the pattern is the crazy sock lady vanilla DK socks which is free on her Ravelry page and she has yeah it's small medium or large and they knit up on 3.25 millimeter needles and I use um chow goo needles um that are fixed and I always do my socks on not always but generally do my socks on magic loop yeah I'm quite pleased with those and it's good to have finally have them finished when I just decided to sit down and finish them it didn't take long at all so I do have a few rips um the first one is 
I don't, if you have the Pom Pom magazine, is this Effervescent Pullover by Amy Sher, which is on the front cover. It's like all over Instagram at the minute. There's, um, in fact, I love all the patterns in this this quarter's Pom Pom magazine. And I really loved um, the lace detail and the frill. I just think it's really nice, especially for spring. So I, I started this in one wall and then I changed my mind and I've decided to knit it up in um, some beehive yarns fingering weight sock wool that I've got in my stash that I had wanted to use for um, the Whitmore top by Taylor Studio and I had two skeins of the wool in the colour it's um, the colour rye, let me just check I think, beehive yarns and the colour is rye and there it is and you needed an extra skein for the for the Whitmore one so I ordered it um, and obviously she's a hand dyed yarn she's a hand dyed yarn dyer um, and it came and they're not quite the same let me get it they're not quite the same colour um, the tone is similar but yeah they're definitely not the same so I couldn't use them in the Whitmore cardigan so what I decided I'd bought them to make a garment, so, and I'd also bought um, this mohair to go with it because you hold fingering in lace weight yarn for the Whitmore jumper. So I was like, oh, what, what can I use all this yarn in? So what I've just, and whether this is going to be a good idea and work out okay, um, is I'm, good, I'm making the effervescent pullover with it. And what I've decided to do is do the cuffs and the hem band, and I'm going to do the neck band and then the arm cuffs in the darker skein of the rye, and then I'm going to do the body in the, the lighter one. And I'm hoping that because they're all the cuffs, the neck band will be in this colour, that it'll tie in and it'll look okay. And then the main body and the lace weight, uh, the main body and the lace part of the knitting pattern in this and then use some of this for the ruffle so yeah I'm really looking forward to it I am quite a slow knitter this is how far I've got and you work it from the bottom up and this is um one-to-one -one twisted rib which I'd never done before and that felt like it took me forever but um yeah, now it's just the fluff net stitching around. Hopefully it'll go a bit quicker. So I'm like really looking forward to having this done. And I love the colours. So yeah, that's one of my whips that I've got going on at the minute. So yeah, and this, the mohair as well, is from Beehive Yarns. And the colour is Golden Olive. And it's her patty base, which is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. Yeah, 50 grams is 420 meters. So it's nice and soft. So yeah, I can't wait to get this done. Hopefully I'll have it done before winter and get a chance to wear it. The effervescent pullover is for a chest 92 centimeters to 162.5 centimeters. And it's designed to be worn with 10 to 20 centimetres of ease. So I'm knitting up the size three, um, which I don't, I don't think it just gives me 20 centimetres of ease. That's, it's approximately 12 centimetres because I didn't want it to be overly like baggy. Um, and the pictures that they show you, the models, they tell you what size they've made and how big they are. So yeah, I thought 12 centimetres is quite a good amount of ease really for, for a jumper for me and when I get to the armholes I don't know I'm, I think I'm probably going to add a little bit extra because it is a cropped jumper pullover and I don't want I don't want it to be too cropped I want it to definitely go over the waist of my like high-waisted trousers and jeans so I might do it a bit longer than the pattern suggests 
So yeah, I shall keep you up to date on that. Um, and then the next thing that I have been knitting on for quite a while is, and this is in another little bag that I made. And like I mentioned in um, some, my effervescent I've got in my big bag that I made for knitting like jumpers and pullovers we can fit a lot in um which is the wide wide open pouch by noodle head patterns and it's a free pattern i'll link it down below but that is the same pattern that i've made this one from some nice fabric women on the beach sunbathing i am making the color craze shawl by um, Tammy Gore and it's a fingering weight shawl with eyelets and brioche weird so this is what I've done so far of it this is the first shawl that I started knitting before I, I knit my Stephen West one but then I started on the Stephen West one and got sidetracked and then carried on with that one so this one I'm going to finish soon I've not got much too much of it left actually and also it was the first time I've done brioche and I absolutely love the brioche stitch I love knitting it I love how it looks so yeah I'm really enjoying this and this is going to be a present for somebody special and they love all the little eyelets and things so what I've decided I had like a mini scheme a mini set of 10 gram skeins and um which I really love the colours of so I wanted to use those and on um, Instagram there's people who have used mini skeins to do the colours with so that's what I've gone with and then it's held with this main colour which I've used for the main colour throughout this blue and I'm pretty sure these are all yeah, these are all beehive yarns as well. So um, this was her spring tonal set. Um, I do love her colours. Um, I'll link her shop down below. Um, yeah, I just love her colour palette that she has. They're all, like I could buy all of her colours. They're all really good. Um, just get out. Yeah, so these are the ones that I haven't, that I've used of and still got some of the colours left and these are the three colours I haven't used yet which I think I'm going to use this one next for the next set of brioche I think and then you might only get a chance to use one of the others so I think I might use this one so yeah I'm really enjoying knitting this this is also another one that I sometimes take when the kids are doing swimming lessons to knit in the car it's all yeah her fingering weight um, yarn, her sock yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, merino and 25% nylon. And this is the main colour, which is um, Storm Skies. So hopefully I'll have this finished in time for this person's birthday, who I'm going to give it to. I won't say in case she's watching, like you never know, she might be. She's not interested in knitting or sewing, but I think she might watch, so yeah. There it is. So I'm really, really pleased with it. And it's such a really a good pattern, especially I think if you've got little scraps and stuff for like a mini scheme set to use. Yeah. There we are. If anyone else, I've got quite a few mini scheme sets that I've picked up. If anyone else has got any good ideas for patterns I would be very interested because I need to start using them up and also like bits of yarn that I've got left from socks and things I need to um I plan to try and use them up rather than leaving them in the stash I know you can make like scrappy scrappy socks and things but um yeah if anyone's got any other ideas let me know or any other good shawl patterns that people really like um oh I um, also have started another sock, another whip, and this is a Summerlee Knits um, pattern.
pattern and it's she does like little books and this is her shorty sock pattern set and then I'll probably be able to put a better picture in and the one that I've just knitting up is all the frills so it's got this frill around the top and then yes yeah, shorty sock um so this is she has um one two three four sizes from seven inch up to ten inch um socks and this is the first time i've knit one of her sock patterns and this is i'm using 2.25 millimeter needles again on magic loop and this is it so far this is my first one this is going to be my frill at the top which I'm absolutely loving and this yarn was actually a leftover and I'm going to do a contrast um, heel and maybe a contrast toe I think and these two yarns are from leftover from my Stephen West shawlography shawl which I really love this one nugget nougat and then velveteen and again, this has turned into a Beehive Yarn appreciation episode. These are from Beehive Yarns, which I got um, last year. So yeah, these socks, I'm really looking forward to having the little frill on. Yeah. I always think it's good to have like a sock on the go. I was thinking, I might... Um, Make my girls some socks as well like for the house or well they could wear them out if they wanted but that'll help use up some of my scraps that i've got as well i think they quite like matching ones to wear together oh and this bag i made as well um it's got pockets on both sides and you could either do a drawstring finishing like I've done here or the pattern you can um, do a zipper finishing as well and then inside I've also put two more pockets which basically mirror like the pockets on the outside that you've got and you can fit, fit loads in here really good so this pattern is by Incomplete Stitches and it's the Apex pouch and it comes in Two or three sizes and I think this is the size large that I made and um, she does some really nice bag patterns and then it's rifle paper fabric if anyone's interested which I got from Cloth and Candy but unfortunately she just shut, her, shut their shop so yeah finally using up some of my many fabric scraps as well and I absolutely love this bag and then the second the last Thing. I haven't actually started, well I did like a gay gorge gauge swatch because um, I'm going to, I'm testing a pattern, a sock pattern, so this is by, so this is by um, the Woolly Badger on Instagram and she's on Ravelry, um, it's a test knit, I've never done a test knit before, I've done lots of um, test sewing um lots of different pattern designers where you make up their their pattern and then obviously give your feedback like fit instructions and stuff like pretty much the same as a test knit in knitting so i've done quite a lot of those um for various different pattern designers and then this, um the woolly badger put up some pictures of these socks and they're frilly and i've got eyelets on and they, i just loved them so um i applied to do testing it in I was lucky enough to get to be able to do that so I'll just show you the swatch which is all and it's not like it's probably not how you're supposed to do gauge swatches but I have done it in the round which I wouldn't normally do when I was like knitting a jumper but it's not as many I haven't made it so I can measure a full 10 centimeters it's more to measure like five centimeters but yeah and it's just like neck stitch knitting around which I think I'm going to probably rip back to use the yarn and it's this sock pattern when it comes out you'll be able to do it in four ply 
or four ply and lace health mohair held together which is what the one that I'm testing so I'm going to use some more of the mohair that I'm using for my effervescent pullover so that's the same one because I bought three skeins to go in the Whitmore jumper so I have a lot of this so I'm going to use that and then I um, knit last January started knitting my mom for her 70th birthday find your fade shawl and this is one of the it's a Malib 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 Malibu I can't remember I'll pop it down below um one of their sock yarns and um obviously I didn't use a lot of color this color in my fade so yeah I've got lots of this left and I just thought those two go quite well together and I love this color and I love how the swatch is knit up so these will be going to like the top of my knitting list to try and get these done um, and I also mine um, make the girls a pair each I think it'd be really cool if we all had like matching frilly socks so anyway I'll make the ones that I'm testing it in first and then yeah, I think I might make the girls some I think they'll look really cute so yeah, she has got a picture of it on her Instagram page with the socks. They are called, they're going to be called, well, I can't say in case I'm not allowed to, but yeah, they've got frills and they've got eyelets and they've got fingering weight and lace um, knitted up together. So I don't, what more could you wish for in a pair of socks? I'm really keen to get, get those going. And I'll um, they'll be definitely be turned by the next time. That might be the only missed object I've done for next time um, when I'm doing my next um, podcast. So yeah, those are all my works in progress. And then I've got a plan. If I, if I manage to finish one of these things, I bought yarn from I bought it from Wool Warehouse. Um, because what I also want really, there's quite, a, like I say, I love like all the things in here. I like the plumacus as well, but I really like the cloud bow um, jumper. Here it is, and it's like a top or a dress. I just think it's really, really lovely. Um, so it's a loose gauge top or a dress with puff sleeves and a peplum and it's knitted in a single strand of lace. I think it's on six millimetre needles as well. So I think it should be like quite a quick, quick knit. Um, and the one that they're using here, they stripe. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And I've bought, um, I've never used this before, any drop yarn. Obviously, the price point is it's quite affordable. Um, and although I look love, I absolutely love the look of the cloud bow top. Um, I don't actually wear any lace knits. I'm not even sure like how well that's going to survive me getting hooked on door handles and just how clumsy I am. So. I'm going to knit it up in some drops, kid silk. So yeah, they're super kid mohair and silk yarn. And I've got this colour and this colour, and I think they'll go really well together. And I really love love these colours. So yeah, I'm really excited to um, get knitting on that when I. But I'm not going to knit it until I finished. One of the things, that one of my whips that I've already got, got going. So yeah, that is my, I have like loads of plans in my head, but that is my next plan that I've got yarn for that I'm definitely going to get going on. So I've got quite a few acquisitions, um, and mainly because I went to the East Anglian Yarn Festival, which was last Sunday. Um, I live in Norwich, I'm not from Norwich, I'm from Sheffield, but um, I came to Norwich to go to uni and then have stayed. So um, yeah, I was really excited. It was the first time I've been to 
a yarn festival and um, actually it was Mother's Day here um, and I took my eldest with me so we could have a little bit of time together. Um, so yeah, first of all though, I'm sure like if you're watching it in podcasts that you watch Rebecca the Crayer Bear knitting podcast. Um, I have found her recently and have watched like quite mo pretty much most of her podcasts so far. Um, oh, she's really easy to watch. She's really happy. I just everything she talks about are really interesting. And so obviously she was um, running the um, Woolly Knit Cone along with Woolly Knit. So obviously I had to buy some of the Woolly Knit Cones and I bought this one. Can you see it? It's like net. And this is the Merino Wool Cone and it's Terra Beige Net. So yeah, 500 gram cones. I think it's like 22, 25 pounds, which like you can't go wrong with. The quality is lovely. It feels so soft. And I have actually, where is it, decided that I think I might knit up the Whitmore sweater in this and hold two strands of this together to get like the DK weight. And this is my swatch that I've done of it. It is so soft. It is lovely. So yeah, that is my pla another, another plan that I have for when I finished my whips. I'm going to knit up the Whitmore in this. This is not like, obviously the Whitmore is, yeah, so this is a jumper. So I'd be doing like the cloud bow first because I think I get more use out of that in like the spring, summer. And then this is one for after that. And I'm really excited about knitting it up. And this is a really nice, nice wool to knit with. And then the other one that I got from there, which is another cone, is this one. I just love this blue colour and this is a nept one as well. I really like the idea of it. And this is British wool, 100% British wool and it is blue John Nep. Yeah. Again, I think 22, 25 pounds. And I think for how much wool you're getting and the quality, I don't I don't think you can go wrong. And I know why Rebecca <laughs> like loves them so much. And I'd also knitted a swatch in this because I was thinking about knitting the effervescent pullover in it. But then I really wanted, I'd skein, um, wound up all the wool that I was, that I'm knitting up the effervescent in and I just wanted to get that wool used. But um, I had knit up a little swatch and that's what that is. That's it, like washed as well. So yeah, I could think of something to knit in this, but yeah. I'm really pleased with these and I'll definitely buy, go back and buy more of their wool. So the East Anglian Yarn Festival, so I lot, watch a lot of knitting podcasters and um, as, and also I've, when I first got into the knitting community, I guess a lot of them were hand, hand dyed yarn dyers. Um, and a lot of those were going to be there, so I was like really pleased and excited to go. So I start going through what I've got. The first one, um, the first thing I bought was from Adventures in Yarn Craft. And I think like I mentioned Laura from Adventures in Yarn Craft might have been the first hand-dyed yarn that I ever bought actually. And also I did, during lockdown, she did um, a dyeing workshop and we did it over zoom so you bought the workshop and she sent you everything that you needed and then we dyed yarn in our kitchens and I really enjoyed it and actually have knitted quite uh, knitted, dyed quite a few pieces of yarn since then um which I've like really enjoyed so yeah this is what I got from her her mini um merino socks get sock set and they're 20 gram skeins and it's called Bohemian Spring and these were a new release last week. I think they're really beautiful, go together well. I don't know whether I'm going to knit, um, I'm not sure, maybe a shawl or I might knit some like 
stripy socks or something. I'm not sure yet, but I, I just loved all the colours. And it is fingering weight, four ply, 85% soft wash merino and 15% nylon. Yeah, so that was my first purchase. And Laura looks really lovely. Um, the second thing I bought, yarn I bought was from um, Chromatic Yarns, Hannah from the Corner of Craft. I love her podcast as well. And she dyes yarn and she makes um, stitch markers. I'm trying to think. I did with it. Here it is. And then I bought this little dragon stitch marker as well. It's really cute. My daughter liked this one. So yeah, thank for that. And this is a 100% blue face Leicester sturdy DK, which I'm going to make boxing. So yeah, I really haven't used any blue face Leicester. So I was really keen to try that, especially for socks and see how they wear compared to like the merino and nylon. Yep. And then um, I also, when I first started knitting and the hand dyed yarn, buying that, I wasn't really aware of what even like super washed meant or the difference between super washed and non super washed. And obviously, since becoming more interested in knitting, I have looked into it, and obviously, superwash yarn. I'm not going to go into it here, but um, is obviously much worse for the environment than non superwash yarn. So I did want to go there with the intent of trying to find some non superwash yarn to use for my knitting, and the first yarn that I bought is from um, Wensleydale Long Wool and it is it is um it's another net yarn I don't know if you can see she ha they have got loads of lovely wools and I loved it was hard to choose a colour actually but she had all the colours knitted up and um this is one, the one that I like the most. I'm just trying to see if it's got a colour on. Let's see what the colour was. It's got sh a shade number 7115. But yeah, this is 100% um, wool as well. DK weight. So yeah, I've got six skeins, uh, six balls of this. And yeah, I'm going to make it to use a jumper. I was thinking maybe, because um, I have this pattern, the so Spring Sorrel, is it by Wool and Pine Designs? I'll link it below. Um, I do have that pattern, I bought it last year. Um, I think it'll look really nice in this. So that would be a pattern I think that I'd probably use for this, because I've got enough wool for that pattern. So I bought, yeah, six of those. I could have bought so much more yarn and I do think that I will um, online buy more of their yarn for definite and then oh we also went to the crafty bird stall and my daughter so all her pom-poms her fur fur pom-poms and she like she loved them so she chose this one and then I knew my youngest daughter would also want one. So we chose this one for her. And I'm going to knit them hats ready for next winter to put these pom-poms on. So I choose like similar yarns. And then we got home and my little boy was like, where's my pom-pom? I want this pom-pom. This one's mine. So um, I'll have to go back to her shop at online and buy my pom-pom. Then knit them all a hat ready for next winter. And hope they wear them because sometimes I make them sew them clothes. Not my eldest, but my little boy in particular is a bit particular about what he wears. And I've sewn him clothes that he's never worn. So um, hopefully he'll wear a hat though. So yeah, I love these. They're so soft as well. Yeah, 
a really cool. And then the last yarn I bought, which I absolutely love, and it's my favourite yarn, and it was so difficult to choose the colours. And all these are, um, they're all pure wool, non-superwash, and also they're um, naturally dyed as well. And she is in Norfolk, actually, and she's got a workshop, and then she's opened two shops. Well, there's two shops in Norfolk that sell her yarn, um, so I definitely will be getting more of her yarn. And it's the Fibre Workshop Norfolk Horn Yarn. So I've got these two to go together. It's like a pale, pale green and then see this dark green. So it's 100% Norfolk home wool, sourced from small producers in Norfolk and it's spun in Yorkshire. And it's hand dyed with natural plant dyes and these two are DK, 50 grams each. So I love those and I think those will go really well, nicely together. I don't know, it might make a hat or some mittens maybe I think. For winter it was honestly so hard to choose what color scheme to go with really difficult I could have I could have bought them all and then I also bought some fingering weight yarn and I bought this is um, her un undyed fingering weight this is 50 grams and then I bought a 25 gram skein to go with it and this is madder pink yeah, I think they're really good together as well. She had some um, kits made up of um, like fingerless mittens that she'd used her yarns for and hats. And I think I'm definitely going to make mittens out of these, I think, either for myself or as a gift for someone for Christmas. I think they're lovely. So yeah, really excited to um, actually meet her. We had a bit of a chat. She does... Um, she does some dyeing workshops, which hopefully I might get to, like natural dye, you might get to try out in the summer maybe, or at some point in the next year. So yeah, I think this is one of my like favourite wool purchase of the day, and I'm really excited to um, get knitting with these. Think carefully about what I'm going to make, but I think hat mittens, I think, yeah. So, oh, and then, I don't know about you, and obviously anyway in winter, but also my job, I have to literally wash my hands all the time. And they're really dry and sore and cracked. So I thought I'd try some of this um, Crafters Farm that Laura from, I feel really bad, I can't remember her name. She like organised the festival. Hello, Minita. I think that's it. I'll put... Um, a link anyway down below and I also bought I can't find them some needle ends to put on by Laura as well so yeah it's um she had orange lemon and peppermint and I went for the, the orange so I'm looking forward to soothing my hands with that as well so thanks for stopping by again if you came back to watch um yeah, hope it's been enjoyable. If you've got any questions, anything you want to ask, just pop a question down below. And yeah, hopefully see you next time. Bye.